Hi, my name's Brent, and welcome to Project Strange. In this series, we're learning about the fundamentals of structural engineering and how it affects our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we're learning about load combinations. But first, let's talk about history. Acclaimed Canadian engineer Carl Terkstra was the first person to be granted a PhD in engineering by the University of Waterloo in 1963. He is internationally recognized for creating what has become known as Terkstra's Rule, a probabilistic approach to structural design load risk management to ensure a consistent level of reliability against failure. In his article, Theory of Structural Design Decisions, published in 1970, Terkstra formulated the load combination rule. Worst case of combined transient loads occurs when one load, the principal action, is its extreme value. Other loads, the companion actions, are the largest that would be expected while the principal action has its extreme value. Terkstra's rule has become the basis of structural design in building and bridge design codes around the world, including National Building Code of Canada. For both you and I to learn more, let's check out Peyton's interview with our friend Tristan. Time for... The Interview. Oh, I just touched some bird poo. <laughs> so, load combinations. Load combinations. Tell me, what's a load combination? I know you know what loads are. What loads can you think of off the top of your head? Snow. Yeah. Oh, a live load. Or yeah, car. live loads, like a, a person or a car. I don't have people in my bag. I do have oh, some animals. animals. These will be my live load. Oh my gosh. What about dead loads? Is that uh, like a, a dead a dead body? When we refer to dead loads, we aren't talking about stacks of dead bodies that we keep in our attics. What we're talking about is the dead weight, the weight that comes inherent in an object. So let's say this is a house. The dead load is the house, is what the it's made weight, out of? The dead weight of the house itself, okay. without occupants, without uh, external forces acting on it, without without snow, wind, rain. Another one is, is wind. Uh, it's good that we're outside. We've got a little bit of a breeze happening. Yes. Uh, your pages are fluttering. They are. Um, wind can be very severe. We have to watch out for it. You could have a very stable structure under gravity, but it won't be stable under, under wind. And then another one is uh, earthquakes. Wait. Earthquakes are a definite consideration when you're designing a building or a bridge or or anything that you want to still be standing after an earthquake. Here's an, here's an example of an earthquake load. So the job of an engineer is to design a structure that suits the needs of, of whoever's hiring us or whatever our goal is. And if I'm gonna design a structure, let's just make a simple little model here. And I have, giraffe is not invited to the party. Yeah. <laughs> and they are safe. They're living in their apartment. They're happy. The family has a Christmas party and it snows. They invite their friends over to visit for Christmas. And there's an earthquake. Oh my gosh. And this is it's raining and snowing. Worst and Christmas windy. ever. Precisely. So they come back and they complain and said that the structure I designed was not yeah. very strong. Well, could they even complain? It looks like they're all dead loads now. They're tough. Yeah. They're tough. They're resilient. Rightly, an engineer should design a structure for all loads likely to be applied. And in Canada, we've got wind, yes. we've got snow. We've got earthquakes, we've got inherent weights of material or dead Tornadoes. loads. Tornadoes. We have, that's, that's a different case. Oh. That's a very- We're uh, not gonna get into that. Load combinations are fa fascinating because they answer the question, what is the statistical likelihood mm -hmm. of multiple events occurring at the same time? It's unlikely that you will have a Christmas party yeah. on the worst snow of the year yeah. while a tornado hits your house yeah. in an earthquake. And who gets yeah. to make that decision? We have codes. It's Justin Trudeau and his government currently. Yeah, true. They delegate to Ontario author Building Code Authority and they've done studies, statistical studies, mm -hmm. to say this is the probability of occurrence mm -hmm. of Christmas parties. Mm -hmm. This is the probability of occurrence of tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And they build engineering design codes to say it is unlikely that we're going to have a stegosaurus yeah. on our structure. If someone contests me and says, yeah, but I thought you needed to account for all loads likely to be applied. I can go to my local building code mm -hmm. and say, see, the government of Ontario has agreed with me that Stegosaurus is an unlikely load to be yeah, applied. Be but live loads due to Christmas parties yeah. or any party, uh, if you have a lot of people over to your house, Our that's a likely love, occurrence. Another there. thing to consider in statistics is variability, which means if I weighed this floor assembly today and I weigh it again tomorrow mm -hmm. and I weigh it again a year from now, it's not going to change very much. Yeah. If I weigh the occupants of a house on 
one day and then the next day could be a weekend and they had some friends over. It is a highly variable load. And so, as an engineer, I can accurately predict the weight and performance of the dead weight of the, the, of the structure, the but I cannot predict how much the live load will vary, what the live load will consist of, and so the combination mm -hmm. of these is prescribed in, in the building codes, and it's what that does is they divide it into two different types. The primary loads, the likely loads, the ones that we need to consider are called the principal loads. Okay. First load combination is, is it going to stand up under gravity? Seems obvious, but sometimes that's a tricky one because often you don't think about an unused structure just sitting there for a long period of time. Or some structures don't have a large percentage of occupant loads. They just are heavy and they exist that way. Additional loads, the secondary loads that may or may not be applied, have been uh, called companion loads. So for example, having a party in a house is a very likely common occurrence and the code defines a limit of who's likely to be invited to the party and so this would be a perfect example of a principal load combination that we have to account for and the way we account for them is we have safety factors which i know you've learned about sometimes large families or large groups of friends get invited to parties and we need to have a certain over strength to account for a large yes, party. Safety factors applied to dead load, which is in this case, I would put a 25% increase on my dead load to be okay. safe. So I weigh this, I know how much I, it weighs. Yeah. If this was a hundred pounds, mm -hmm. just not, I would design it for as if it was 125 pounds, okay. just to be safe. Gotcha. And if this party weighed 100 pounds, yeah. I would design it as if it was 150 pounds. Gotcha. Different factor for different loads to account for variability mm -hmm. and to account for precision and our understanding. And I have a high understanding of what I use to build the, the weight of the structure. Yeah. So where it gets confusing, these are our principal loads. Mm -hmm. The companion loads are where it becomes a little bit more challenging because if this is the amount of snow that I can reasonably expect just on an average day. And so to put that on top is unreasonable for an engineer because if I had to design for all those loads, my buildings or my designs would start getting excessive mm -hmm. and we would all have to live in concrete bunkers without windows, with really thick bunker-like floors yeah. and nobody wants to live in a house with no windows. No. Nobody wants to, or no one wants to purchase a house with three feet deep concrete slabs, mm -hmm. but that might be what I need to resist the combination of snow and parties and meteors. Watch out for meteors if you invite dinosaurs to your party. Yeah. It's a hazard. The code gives us combinations of loads that are likely to be applied and that's why they're so important because we don't want to build in a bunker reasonable house can support a reasonable party with sufficient levels of, of safety for the odd overstress event in the event of a dance party that's statistically unlikely but might happen or safe and the code tells us what percentage of snow and wind and earthquake is a different case but this might only have to support 40% of the max snow load because it's unlikely that the worst party in the life of the structure is going to also happen at the worst snow day and the worst windstorm. So the dead load, that is the, the load of the building, it's the mass of the building itself. Yep. The live load, snow load, it's not live, well, no, it's not. It's a variable load. Snow load. Um, we've got our roof. Wind? Oh yes, wind. Win. And then we're gonna add a meteor. A there is a dinosaur, and, and when you have dinosaurs, you need to worry about meteor strikes. Yeah. And so. earthquakes. Earthquakes. Okay. And bigger meteors. Oh. Gorgeous. <laughs> and now atom bomb. Atom bomb. All right. So basically, a load combination results when more than one load type acts on the structure. Building codes usually specify a variety of load combinations together with load factors, like weightings, for each load type. This ensures the safety of the structure under different maximum expected loading scenarios. The size of the load factor is based on the probability of exceeding any specified design load. That wraps up this episode of Project Strange. A special thank you to Tristan for teaching us about load combinations, and a special thank you to you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to learn more about structural engineering with me, and don't forget to enjoy the process. So I've heard a rumor that engineers do not like architects. 